Hi and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tom and some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram. I'm a photographer, I'm a videographer and I specialize in shooting watches, but I'm a watch enthusiast first. And on this channel, I just try to make the best possible showcase videos for watches that appeal to me. If you like my content, please take a minute to like my videos and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into it. Resence isn't new to the channel. Last year I did a video on the Type 1 Squared and I'm really happy that the people at Resence were kind enough to send over their Type 3 Eucalyptus for me to check out. If you are not familiar with Resence yet, Resence is a Belgian brand and I really think they make something really truly unique in the watch scene. If the patented Resence Orbital Convex System, or in short ROCS, isn't enough to dazzle you, this watch takes it up a notch by having two separate compartments. A top half that is filled with oil, and a bottom half with air that houses the base caliber. Before we dive into all that, let's have a look at some basic specifications first. The watch has a case with a diameter of 44mm and a thickness of 15mm. It's a grade 5 titanium case with two domed sapphire crystals on the front and back, with an anti-reflective coating. The watch has a water resistance of 30 meters and weighs just 79 grams. The dial is also made from a convex grade 5 titanium plate. And honestly, this is where the basics stop. Right, maybe telling the time is considered basic on a watch, but you might have noticed that this isn't your typical three-hander. So let's take a minute and see how this all works. That big hand points to the minute track around the dial. The hand on the largest subdial, so the one that has the Resence logo, indicates the hours. The subdial that is divided into seven parts indicates the day of the week, with the parts in red showing Saturday and Sunday. We can even tell if it's AM or PM because the hand will be pointing to the first or second part of the horizontal day marker. On the outer ring, almost at the side of the watch, we have a day track running around the dial. And at 6 o'clock, the yellow triangular marker will point to the day of the month. There is no running seconds, but the smallest of the subdials is called the runner, and it makes a full rotation every 180 seconds. Finally, the subdial with the blue and yellow markers is our oil temperature meter. Yes, oil, but more about that later. The aim of Resence was to tell time in the most purest way possible. And I'll admit when people ask for the time and you flash your wrist at them, you will see the error in their eyes, but it's really very intuitive. When I let my kids figure it out, they managed to tell me the time quickly without me giving them any hints. I have to be honest though, and they thought it was a kitchen timer at first. Now, for most people, telling time with a traditional configuration will be faster because it's how we are programmed to tell time. But logically, this is a much more intuitive system and much faster to tell the time. Inside the watch is an ETA-based caliber 2824-2, and most of the watch is just driven by the minute axle of that movement. But as you might think, this isn't exactly the off-the-shelf version, but a really inventive in-house developed and patented ROCS system existing of 215 additional parts that make all this possible. The legibility on this piece is amazing from every possible angle. And this is because the top half is filled with oil. And because of that and some simple laws of physics that I don't understand, the refraction of light is completely cancelled out and it almost looks like there is no sapphire. The hands aren't your traditional hands either, but they're actually printed on the discs. And it's not the hands that move, it's the discs that rotate. All the graphs appear to be projected onto the top crystal as if onto a screen. Almost an e-ink reader kind of feeling. And when the lights go out, you are hit with a surprise because the different colored loom is insane. I imagine the only thing more impressive is seeing the northern lights. To compensate for oil volume changes due to temperature variations, there are seven bellows inside that make sure that there are no bubbles or air forming inside the dial. The oil temperature gauge is there to indicate the ideal running temperature, and you should be fine staying in a range of minus 5 Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. You'll excuse me for the fact that I haven't tried to see what happens if the temperature exceeds that range. So as I mentioned, the watch consists of two parts. The top half has the oil filled dial and the dry bottom part houses the movement. So how are they connected? Well, magnets. And aren't magnets supposed to be the enemy? Yeah, but they found a solution for that too. So several micro magnets connected to each other are positioned inside the upper half and the lower half. And in that way, the minute information can be transmitted from the base caliber to the ROCS system. The magnets are just one millimeter in diameter and only half a millimeter thick. They are physically positioned far from the regulating organ. Then some more extra strong magnetic conductors were developed to reduce the spread of magnetic fields. And the residual fields are deflected by a specifically designed alloy. In the same way that a Faraday cage would do for electromagnetic fields. You might notice there's no crown. Not to try and be woke so the lefties don't feel like a minority, but because the whole watch can be set by using just the case back. 
They have a much needed yet very clear instructional video about how it all works, but basically you just turn the case back one way to set the time and you twist it counterclockwise to advance the date. The Type 3 already existed in black and white and this eucalyptus was released at Watches and Wonders last year. This color totally felt like a wellness day on the wrist, a muted green with hints of grey. With the black and white having that more extreme contrast, this green shade gives a more calm vibe, nothing too flashy. Because of the rounded shape, this won't catch your sleeve and will still manage to slide under your cuff and jacket easily enough. It's a 44mm watch, but it feels to wear smaller. Also because it wears really light and it has a very comfortable strap. Now, I don't think you can call this watch understated. Um, I certainly was very aware when wearing this thing on my wrist. It's also not every day that I'm allowed to wear a 30,000 Swiss francs watch. But I guess the target audience for these watches is also looking for something that is unique and stands out in the rest of their collection. If you made it to this part of the video, thanks. I know this isn't your mainstream watch, but I really like talking about watches like this. Your support really helps, so don't forget to hit that uh, like and subscribe button. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are about these watches. Are they new to you? Is this the first time you're seeing these? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below or come find me on Instagram. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.